Uh, let's get Candice Holdsworth's uh, opinion, uh, political commentator, of course. Candice, welcome to the Independent Republic. Good to be First back. time I think you've been in here uh, since we've had this with me, anyway, which is great. Yeah. Um, and, of course, uh, a regular on Plank of the Week. Um, Peter Bone didn't make it onto the list this week, I don't think. But, um, you know, he, he professes his innocence. I mean, it's difficult to know in these situations. Yeah. You know, Parliament has made a decision. There wasn't much support for him, it did seem, yesterday. Mm. Um, if there is another by-election, it's a kind of so what now, isn't it, really? Yes, because yes. Because as we sort of hurtle towards the general election, albeit quite slowly, um, I don't think any more by-election will make any difference to the way people think, will they? No. And, you know, from what I've heard from um, journalists very connected to Westminster, they say that Conservative MPs feel just totally exhausted. Yeah. That they've lost their momentum. Mm. They, some of them are even saying maybe we need time yeah. out of power. Right. I mean, there was an excellent article in The Spectator this morning saying how Rishi Sunak has even lost his fizz. Mm. I mean, he looks bit defeated and I think yeah. that they know that the momentum isn't with them anymore. Well it can't be great can it? I mean we spoke about this the other day that it was his first anniversary uh, which had come around pretty quickly really. I mean, there's a Telegraph uh, 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 cartoon this morning from Matt where it says they say one year of Rishi Sunak is roughly equal to seven Liz Trust premierships um, and you kind of go and uh, you know you must wake up every morning and think can anything work? Can anything go right for me? This morning he was up um, speaking about AI uh, and he's setting up an AI safety institute. Yes. And all that ever happens in the wake of him launching these kind of initiatives is, well, haven't you got something more important to do? You know, it may well be that AI is threatening us all and we'll all be killed by a robot at some point in the future. Yeah. Uh, but meanwhile, can you bring down the price of inflation? Can you fix my mortgage? Uh, can you stop the boats, please, if you don't mind? Well, they've gone very quiet on those five pledges. Yes. I mean, especially about inflation, yeah. because it's not possible for him to bring down inflation. Yeah. I mean, that is, that's what the Bank of England is charged with doing. Yes. And it was quite foolish, actually, to hitch the Conservative Party's fortunes to that over something over mm. which they had no control. Do you control. know, I think the reason they did it, though, was exactly because they had no control over it, and they thought, because they expected it to just come down, yes, where they the could claim the wisdom. credit on yes. the basis that, well, look, we've managed to get the inflation figures down, yes. but actually nothing to do with that, because all they've done since claiming that they were going to do it uh, is give a load of pay rises out to public sector workers, which, of course, hasn't exactly helped. I know. And the thing is, the Times as well did a poll, and people aren't necessarily thrilled with Starmer. They have a lot of criticisms of the Labour Party, but there's almost like there's just been a mood shift mm. in the country that people yeah. want change. Yes. I mean, I don't know if they're going to get the right type of change. Yeah. I mean, I think the Labour Party still has a lot of problems. Yeah. I mean, Peter Hitchens has been saying, no, now is not the time to vote Labour. Mm. But, you know, in a lot of these Conservative constituencies, Peter Bones included, those, I think, with less than 20,000 are said to be, majority are said yeah. to be under threat. I think so. But I think the real worry for Keir Starmer is not so much will he be the next Prime Minister, but will he actually get a big enough majority to do anything? Yeah. Because I would suspect, if, if, if I was a betting man, uh, which I'm not really, particularly when it comes to politics, um, you know, the, 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 the short odds are that he gets a very, very slim minority government yeah. and that he ends up having to kind of you know, cobble things together and try and get laws passed with the help of other parties and all of that kind of thing. Certainly that's what Lib Dems are hoping for. Yeah. Because otherwise his, his, his swing has to be pretty enormous to get a big enough majority to be able to govern properly. So I think that's probably what might end up happening. And in the meantime, he's got problems of his own because of his stance on the Middle East, because yes. of the answer that he gave yes. uh, to another radio station a couple of, uh, well, over a week ago now. Um, the, the, the Labour Party still can't quite get rid of the ghost of anti-Semitism. No, I mean, it's such a huge divide mm. in Labour. And it's very interesting because, I mean, Starmer, at the beginning of all this, when everything broke out after October 7th, you know, he took a really strong stance yeah. on things. He seemed very self-assured. And now he's backtracking mm. because he's actually very at odds with the grassroots right. on this issue. Which in the end tells you exactly why he's not at the moment ready for prime time because he's not a leader. He tries to please people. That's not leadership. Yes, you know, I agree. He tries to agree with everyone or the last person that left the room. That's not leadership either. If you try to please everybody, you will end up pleasing nobody. And I think, like, the BBC, for instance, has discovered this. I mean, mm. they try to appeal to all different sections of their audience, yeah. and then they just annoy everybody. Right. I mean, what you have to do is you say, this is my judgment yes. in this situation. Right. This is what I believe to be best. Yeah. And you stick by that. Yeah. You don't allow yourself to be captured by lots of different factions. No, exactly right. I mean, we spoke to uh, a Labour MP earlier on in the show uh, who said, oh, yes, we've had a meeting and we're going to have more meetings. But the problem is that it's not been resolved because no. clearly there are people in the Labour Party who want Keir Starmer uh, to be less pro-Israel. 
and more pro-Palestinian. And they want him to shift his position because at the moment his position is still pretty unclear. You know, this ridiculous assumption uh, or assertion that he made that, oh, actually I was asking, answering the question before. The Times has helpfully put out a transcript of the way the questions were asked and the way he answered them. And it makes no sense at all yes. uh, for him to say that he was answering the first the, the question before because it the way he's answered it, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and you're so right. That is not what you want from a leader. You no. want a leader to say, this is what I believe. Yeah. This is what I truly think. Right. And a, re a, a leader with true integrity would say, well, if I'm at that much odds with my own party, then I'll resign. Yeah. Because you stick by your principles right. in situations like principles. this. Principles. Now, that's a word you don't hear very often I in know. politics. I mean, he is so desperate, though, like many uh, MPs are to grasp the, the, you know, the final kind of, uh, you know, the triumphant cup yes. of victory, which is to get into number 10 Downing Street. Because if you're, not, if you're an MP and you don't want to be Prime Minister, there's probably something wrong with you. Yes. But then they get to a point where they become so ambitious for the actual job that they don't have any principles anymore. They don't believe in anything anymore. I know, and they sort of just sort of mould themselves to fit what they think yeah. focus groups want. Right. And really, is that what people want? Is that what we look for in our leaders? You know, someone who's just purely reactive. I don't think we do. No. But I think that's what politics is now. I think it's about appealing to lots of different constituencies because that's how you win elections. Yeah. Well, I mean, we shall see how that goes. Meanwhile, the next uh, Labour story that we've been dealing with this morning was the news that came just before we uh, pretty much opened the show that Rachel Reeves has been accused, the Shadow Chancellor, uh, of using, shall we say... Uh, nefarious means to copy some parts of the new book that she's got out about women uh, uh, through through economic history. As I said earlier, it doesn't sound like a great page turner for the Christmas uh, present bag. But um, but I mean, those of us who have been in the business of writing, uh, you've been doing it for many years. I used to do it a lot more than I do now. Mm. You know, everybody knows what plagiarism is, yeah. and if you've done it, you know you've done it. Ooh. She's saying that she hasn't done it, but the FT have done a study of this book and they found twenty instances uh, of directly copied passages and paragraphs and sentences from things like Wikipedia, from The Guardian, and also uh, from uh, a foreword written by Hilary Benn, a fellow Labour MP. That's shocking. Yeah. If true, that's shocking. Mm. I mean, that's one way to destroy the PR for your book and to completely undermine your reputation as a writer. Yeah. I mean, that is such a big no-no. Mm. And this is someone who's possibly going to be the next Chancellor. I know. This is quite a big thing, actually. Well, I think it is because, again, it gives the impression of, a, of, of the character of the, the MP, doesn't yes, it? Whether it's yes. a man, whether it's a woman. Um, you know, you see how they behave to their colleagues. This is one of the reasons that Starmer's got an issue with his character because he used to stand full square behind Jeremy Corbyn. Yes. He used to call him his friend. He used to say that he should be the next Prime Minister. Now he treats him like a sort of piece of dirt on his shoe yes. and thinks that we're all supposed to forget yes, that this guy used to defend him to the, to, the, to the hilt. It's like this amnesia. It's like the Corbyn era never happened. That they didn't. They. I mean, Rachel Reeves did have a bit of integrity mm. in that era, but Jack, but Keir Starmer. I mean, he served in his shadow right. cabinet. I mean, it just shows what an opportunist he is. Yeah. I mean, for me, in these times of crisis. I don't want opportunists. I no. don't mind a bit of pragmatism. Right. Pragmatism can be a valuable yeah. thing in a time of crisis, but not opportunism. No. Not weakness like that.